Paul Graham, Mother. 60 pages, 14 portraits. It's a big book, 10 by 14. It's hardback. It's got a lovely embossed finish with it. It's actually got a photograph. The actual photograph has been stuck on here at the front. And inside there's like these Japanese pink papers and they, they feature, if you skim through it like that, you'll see they feature in different parts of the book as well. It was published by Mac in 2019. You can buy it on their website. I'll put the link for Paul's work and the Mac website in the information box. And you know what? I mean, the first glance, yeah, it's a series of images of his mum, I think in an old folks' home. It's focusing on her, I guess her daily routine, her daily rituals, what she's about, what she is, where she is now. But it's, because it's so beautifully done, it's almost like a memento, because it's so finely finished, and the pictures themselves are actually photographs. You can feel the sort of quality. It, it, it looks like it's just rolled off the printers at the local lab. It's just like, it doesn't feel like a photographic book. It's, these are actually images. And I think it's like the family album feel. It's got that quality. It's like a final memento of his mother at the latter stage of her life. From what I understand, I think Paul really felt this when he was doing it because I think he wouldn't just turn up and take the pictures. He would spend time there and immerse himself in the time passing and in immerse himself into his mother's world while she was sleeping. He would sit there and just let time unfold. And I think, going by the way Paul Graham works in his stories and his images and the way he constructs narrative, it's exactly similar it's, it's sort of similar to the way he does a lot of other things and i'll i'll brief on them in a second and some people might say well this is a book of your mum and this is 14 pictures of her asleep some with her eyes open sitting in a chair natural daylight what's it about what is it about why do i want to look at 14 images of your mum and that's a good question and it's an important question in this because let me just move on to another picture so that's got paul graham there and that's where the sort of Thing starts. It's a bit big, this book, because I'm having trouble fitting it onto my rostrum. But I'll persevere. So let's just, let's have another look at them. Now here's one here. What he wants you to do is understand how time is relevant to somebody, maybe at an age as she is and, and where she is in life, and her daily routine. And he wants you to feel how time's unfolding. And we all have a sense of time. We all have a sense of repetitive motion. We all have a sense of movement and we all live in a sequence of events every single day. And each one of you who's watching this, it's very different. But to Paul's mum, what I'm getting, it's very much the same. She's in her late eighties when this was taken. For whatever reason, she's in, the, in, in this home. For whatever reason, she's sitting in this chair every day. And for whatever reason, she sleeps. And I think Paul would sit there and have a sort of simple setup of how he shot the pictures with the light, with the chair, and the actual angle of view. But I think what he wants the viewer to think about is he wants you to get into her world and understand the slowness of her time and get a feel of what she's going through and a sort of reflection of where you are at that time of your life. And life is very, is, is very much the same, I would guess. I'm not there yet, but is, this is a sort of relevant timescale to this individual. And I, I love this, and I love what Paul's taught me about Photography. I think some people don't get Paul Graham. People think he's really complicated, but he's not. He's what I'm trying to figure out and what I learned from the way he shoots his pictures. And I was a bit skeptical when I saw some of his other stuff at first, many years ago, 
because I didn't understand what he was trying to say. I just saw photography and I just saw it for what it was in that moment. But when you understand the way he tries to operate his pictures and the way he tries to inform you of how, by taking a photograph and how he delivers it, whether he's using a shutter speed, whether he's using light, whether he's using depth of field or a sequence of images, he's trying to move you beyond what you see and delve into the time frame and how it all happened and the time frame of how it's happening, how it's unfolding. And he sort of... He, when, when he did the American Night series, he... I'll just keep going through the book. When he did the American Night series, he had... It was all about invisibility, but it was all about the visible as well. He would have a set of pictures which showed a affluent estate, a house with a car, beautiful American dream home, beautifully exposed. Everything about it was just like boom. But on the other side, he would... He created a set of images which were almost white, which depicted another part of American life, American community, a sort of lower class in a sense. And what he did with that, he sort of made you look further into the pictures. So if you looked on the, at a gallery wall, it would be bright white. But what he made you think about was, let's... I have to look further into that picture to find out about what the subject is. And he was sort of, it was like a sort of metaphor for the way people, underprivileged people or people who were struggling or on the streets were overlooked. And he's trying to say, look harder, look harder. Light, time, awareness is what he's about. And this is what this is about. And when you start trying to get into the role of his mother and feel somewhat the monotony of what she's going through, probably nothing to do with her. It's probably just her old age and where she is. It's just a, getting a sense of, am I that person? Can I be, am I going to be this person? And I think it's, it's beautiful in a way that he's exploring you, not him, not, not his mother. He's making you think about that. Obviously, they're beautifully pic beautiful pictures. So he's very, for me, he's very much into time. He takes a picture, but it's not just about the decisive moment. It's many decisive moments within the context of that frame. And I think when you start understanding how he tries to use images to make you think in a subconscious way, you start getting what he's about. I love his work. I really do. He's a real inspiration to me. I love looking at the shimmer of possibility, the present, the likeness of the whale. His Northern Ireland stuff, when he, he took a photograph of a roundabout, and it was just a roundabout. But what was going on within the context of that roundabout made you stop and think about it. And that, with the, with the, with the smash lights and everything else, and it was in Northern Ireland, it actually, once you start looking beyond the instance and look at what's before and after. That's what it's about with him. You start seeing it. And there's a, that sort of great thing. I t there's a great thing I teach the students when I'm teaching them is you look at a picture and I showed them some stuff of 9-11 and asked them to sort of think about what happened 10 minutes before that? What happened 10 minutes after that? Get you to think about where the images go and where they came from. And that's what Paul does, technically, metaphorically, and that's communicating a state of mind, but actually getting you to jump into the picture and think and really dissect everything you're looking at. I, I just get out and get this and learn from Paul Graham. I just, it's not a simple book, this. It's a real insight into somebody's time and place and where they're at. I'll put a link for MacBooks in the box below. I'll put a link for Paul Graham's website. Check him out, get this book and start learning and start finding out about the way he works. Such a great effort. I love it. And thank you, Paul. Please subscribe to the channel, share this, share the channel, help us get more recognition for photographers and publishers and let's keep photography alive.